Today on TFL Bike, we have a This Just In, and pretty exciting because these are two brand new cake motorcycles. Yeah, brand new to you, not so much brand new to me because I actually had the chance to go out to LA and kind of ride these around. I took this one out on the street, took that one on a motocross track, although we never actually did anything with that video. I only got like two minutes on the bike, but yeah, these are really sweet Swedish design bikes and just look at them, they're, they're awesome. Yeah, they're crazy things to look at. Everybody who's come to the office since we got these in just recently, they're just blown away by the bikes. We've got a lot of other bikes in the office, but these are the ones that everyone is asking about. So in this video, we're gonna walk through the basic specs on these bikes and let you know that we have them and there's more videos of them coming. We've got a couple plans that we'll talk about at the end of this video, but let's start with specs. And since we've already done a video on that bike, let's start with the specs on this. This is the Cake Calc, and it's the OR Race. So this is the most dirt bikey of all the Cake Calcs. And they make a bunch of different variants of this. Some of them are street legal, have a headlight. Some of them have a basket on the back. Um, different wheel and tire setups, street tires. This one has dirt tires, spoked wheels. And... Yeah, exactly. So this is the most off-roady. Um, it's got the fanciest suspension, Olin's forks, and an Olin's rear shock, round about eight inches of travel. So that's really nice equipment. And for off-roading, really the coolest thing about this is it's a 128 pound chassis with a 37 pound 2.6 kilowatt hour battery. So in total, this whole package weighs 165 pounds, which means when you hop on it, it feels as much like a dirt bike as it does uh, well, it feels as much like a mountain bike as it does a dirt bike. Yeah, the weight of it really sounds like neither dirt bike or mountain bike. It sounds like the heaviest mountain bike in the world, but also the lightest dirt bike in the world. So really cool combination. And I mean, we're on the stand right now, but anytime I throw my leg over this, it's just crazy. Even with this super high seat height, um, you know, on the stand right now, I can it's barely so get one toe down. But yeah, it's so easy to throw around. And like I said, I had a couple laps, like two, three laps on the motocross track with this thing. And I'm not a motocross rider, but I was really confident on it. Yeah, and not an insane powerhouse of a bike, about 15 horsepower, which in a motorcycle that weighs just over 150 pounds, 15 horsepower feels pretty spry. Um, yeah, and then they say up to three hours worth of riding on a charge. It takes two hours to charge from zero to 80% and three to get all the way to 100. And there's a few really badass features on this bike. So if you come over here, I'll show you how you turn it on. Very simple, very slick. There's just a button on the top and then it will come to life. So these lights up here come on and it's really bright out. So it's a little bit hard to see that, but you've got these dials that control your braking and your riding modes. So you have explore, excite, and excel for your riding modes. And then you've got three different braking modes. One of them is just a freewheeling coasting braking mode. And then you have what they label two stroke and four stroke, so you can adjust. The two stroke and four stroke mode is probably the most clever naming system I've seen on modes for a bike. That is just so cool, I love it. Something that I like a lot about this bike is that the tactile feel of all this is really good. You can actually feel the, vi the bike vibrate on top of the noises that it makes. But you'll notice as we're standing here, because the bike is on, if you give it a second, that ding, that happens progressively when you're not moving, when you're not actually riding, to tell you that the bike is idling. So if you twist the throttle, the back tire is gonna spin up. She wouldn't know otherwise because it's silent. Um, that dinging noise to indicate idle is not my favorite thing. The Osa does it too. Um, I wish they had just like a hum or- Yeah, or a vibration under, the bike already vibrates. Just make it vibrate under you, I mean, there's some, like the live wire has this really cool pulsing sound. That's annoying. So we're going to pull the kill switch on it because yeah. yeah, that sound just sucks. By the way, the kill switch, pretty unique. It's like a jet ski almost. You pop that on right there. The bike won't run without it. Uh, right now we just have it tethered to the handlebar, but the idea is you could hook that to your wrist and then, um, you know, if you go down or something and the throttle gets pinned open, the bike's not going to just keep throwing dirt at you. So pretty cool feature. One final spec before we move on. Uh, this bike has a 56 mile per hour top speed. So as small and light as it is, a decent amount of top speed from an electric bike. And we'll talk about price at the end of the video, but- One more thing before we move on. Oh. I just think there's 
The, one of the cool parts about this bike is how many in-house parts there are that are made by Cake. Um, like you can see the branding on the bar, it says Bar 01, the rims say Rim 05, so um, just a kind of unique little branding system they have, but it just proves that a lot of these parts are made in-house by Cake. And I know Case touched on the price, a lot of people might complain about the price of it, we'll get to the price at the end, but that's one of the reasons why the yeah. price is what it is. They're making a lot components. of their own parts. And the way they do label everything, I think is really cool to look at. Uh, I mean, just this bike's design in general, the way that they put their logo on the front, the colors, um, the anodized forks, I mean, all really good looking stuff. It's a super sharp bike. Yeah, it is. But should we move on to yours? Yeah, let's move on to the Osa Plus. So if you watch a lot of TFL bike videos, you might remember this bike from a couple months ago. I was out in California and did a full ride review on it. Um, but now we have the opportunity to get it out here, get it on the road and do things with it, not in the cake loop that cake set up for all of us to ride. Not that that wasn't great, but we can now do our own testing with it. One of those tests is going to be a range test. Uh, max range on this is about 52 miles. Uh, if you're doing top speed, which is 56 miles per hour, that's going to cut drastically down. And uh, we want to put that to the test. We know that the roads around here, we're probably not going to get 52 miles of range out of this thing. So yeah. we want to see in regular riding, a little bit of highway, slow highway, a little bit of city, a little bit of country roads, what kind of range we can get out of this thing. Um, and one thing you'll notice between these two bikes is that uh, they share a lot of the same specs. So you have a 2.6 kilowatt hour battery pack, 10 right. kilowatt motor. Uh, so a lot of similarities, even though the components aren't necessarily shared, a lot of the specs are shared. Yeah, and again, very similar cool design. What's really cool about the way that they structure this bike is that it's super modular. So this seat on the back, that's removable. You can put instead a basket there. This seat can slide around. The headlight, as Alex is gonna demonstrate, you can swing the headlight forward and you can put a basket on the front of it. So they just made it, uh, it's very, this very minimalist, functional, modular, kind of design which is pretty cool yeah they they have all kinds of like surfboard racks and different accessories you can put on rear basket front basket and one of the most unique things about this single frame rail in the middle is that the rider seat is adjustable forward and backwards so yeah. sometimes you'll see you know different motorcycles have height adjustability in the seat maybe one or two positions this is pretty much infinitely adjustable it's like a bicycle seat um, this clamps not exactly tightened down right now but you can raise it pretty much to any position you want and you can also slide the whole thing forward and backward uh, to make the ride a little more comfortable for you. Now this bike, unlike the Calc, this is street legal uh, and because of that, you have to have a way for there to be security. So on that bike, you just press a button and it's on, it's running, that's fine for a dirt bike. But this has to be different. However, it doesn't have a key. No key, so how do you turn it on? So you start by pushing the button on the battery I think it was on already. Yeah, so it was on, so there, there you go. go. Battery's on. Push the button. Then up here on the screen, you fire up the screen. Oh, also put it in run. Fire up the screen. It loads, and then you have a pin. Since this is just a factory bike, the pin is set to one, two, three, and now it's running. So you would set your pin, nobody else would know what your pin is, and that's the only way that you can get it riding. And now it's running, and similar to the Calc, you have adjustable riding modes and, and brakes. Exactly, so a little less clever with the naming and everything for these modes. You have ride one, two, and three. You also have a custom mode that you can control in the app. So go through those. Basically the different modes limit your speed and limit the max, max acceleration out of the bike to get you a longer range. Um, when I was riding it, I pretty much rode it in the fastest mode all the yeah. time. That way I could keep up with traffic. And you also have two brake modes, brake mode one and two, uh, and a custom mode as well. So you can either be basically freewheeling with no regen braking or a little bit of regen braking. Yeah. And this bike is meant to be kind of a 125cc equivalent. Uh, and that's the plus model. They do make other versions of this bike that are a little slower too for over in Europe with all your crazy license restrictions and everything. But this one is actually, it's pretty quick. Yeah. It, it, Both of these accelerate go. Yeah. pretty much the same and you wouldn't expect that looking at them next to each other. You'd think that is a hell of a lot quicker, but 
both of these, they're pretty quick off the line. Yeah, one thing that I do think is is just okay is this this green in the bright sunlight is is kind of hard to see it's polarized sunglasses you can, if you have polarized sunglasses on i i mean i know you could see it a little bit when it was loading yeah. i couldn't see it at all i had to take my sunglasses off and i talked to the cake guys about that uh, when i was out there and they said they're working on it but yeah i agree it's not bright enough it needs a different coating or whatever to work with polarized sunglasses now let's talk finally about price this Cake Calc OR race is very specked out. This is one of the nicer and more expensive versions of this bike that they make, and it comes in at 14,000. The entry price into a Calc is 11,000. So big part of that is the fancy Olin suspension that adds a good bit of price to this. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's an expensive bike, but it is a really cool design and really, really well put together. Yeah, and then this bike over here, the Osa Plus, this is one of the higher end Osas, like I was saying, uh, and this goes for right around $10,500. $10, Once again, a pretty expensive bike for something that tops out at around 56 miles an hour and you only get 52 miles of range. You guys had some comments about that in the last video we did with this bike. Um, but like I said, a lot of in-house parts, a crazy design that you can't find on any other motorcycle. They're a brand new company too. So yes, they're expensive, but at the same time, that Maka I rode out in California, that was like four grand. So. And there's also a lot more going on here than just, just the functional specs. When you get up close to these bikes and you interact with them, you can tell that They're this well is a built. premium product. Yeah. It's, it's not your standard, basic, plastic kind of deal. These are really nicely made. Besides uh, the mirrors, these mirrors are the worst <laughs> plastic crappy mirrors I've ever used in my life. They don't, they just, they only swivel. They don't like rotate on a right. ball. So yeah, fix that cake. But other but, than that, pretty other happy than with that, the yeah, bikes. They're beautifully constructed bikes. So be sure to stay tuned to the channel because we have a bunch more videos coming soon. We're gonna do an off-road test on this cake calc. And a range uh, test on the Osa Plus. We're gonna do a range test on that. We're gonna do gadgets and gizmos on it because there's just a bunch of cool stuff to dig into there. So tons more videos coming to the channel. Uh, be sure to go to alltfl.com to check out cars, trucks, motorcycles, everything that's going on in the motorcycle and the automotive world. Yeah, and, we'll and check out tflbids.com too. We just relaunched our auction site, so if you're looking for a new off-roader, hopefully motorcycles in the near future, check that out too. And like you were saying, we'll catch you in the next video.